This is part number 11 of the Stuart Major Beam Engine Rebuild, and in this episode I will be showing how I reprofiled a bearing. I'm using a dental burr for this, which is a very nasty piece of equipment, you have to be very careful with these, they really are sharp. I'm also using a small drum sander, which smooths out the undulations made by the dental burr. The dental burr removes an awful lot of metal at each pass, you have to be very careful with it. You can remove the metal but you can't put it back. What I do is a bit of dental burr, then a bit of drum sander. After quite a long time, the hole in the bearing starts to appear to be in the middle of the bearing. And it's a repeat process of dental burr followed by drum sander, followed by more dental burr, followed by more drum sander, etc. Then eventually rubbing it on a piece of emery cloth. I could of course have made a new bearing, and if this had gone wrong I would have made a new bearing but I would have had to modify the bed plate to mount the new bearing. Having said all that, I think this looks pretty good now, and when it's painted, I don't think anyone will even know that it once looked like this. Except you and me, of course. Another piece on this engine that bothered me was the state of the soldering on the brass piece that's underneath the bed plate where the crankshaft is. So with a little help from my propane blowtorch, some flux, an old paintbrush and some water, I cleaned this up and resoldered it. And once I polished it up on the polishing spindle, it looked fine. A bit of a health and safety warning, as you can see I'm not wearing gloves on this highly dangerous piece of equipment. I've never worn gloves in the workshop because I don't want to get them caught on anything. I haven't lost any fingers, I've got all nine of them. And I've been messing about with steam engines and workshop equipment for about 40 years. Next I cleaned up the bed plate using cellulose thinners. I didn't video this because you have seen it before. Then I took the bed plate out into the garden and sprayed it with some red primer. This casting again is not too brilliant, it's got quite a lot of little porous holes in it. So I'm still not 100% whether these are Stuart castings or just a bad batch, I really don't know. By the time I've painted this bed plate, the paint will fill in the holes. There are three areas on this bed plate where I'm not over spraying too much. One is where the cylinder fits, the other is where the column fits, and the other part is where the main bearing fits. But it's best if these are left thinly painted. I could of course wipe off the paint from these areas at a later date by using a cloth and some cellulose thinners, but in reality the paint's so thin it's going to make no difference. And quickly before all the meticulous engineers get on their keyboards and tell me I'm doing it wrong, I'm really sorry about this. It's the way of things. If I was working on a gas turbine or a steam turbine, I would never do a thing like this on a bearing mounting surface. But this, after all, is an old beam engine, and the tolerances are not exactly, well, the tolerances are just not exactly. This primer that I buy from a high street store in the UK, which sells bicycles and fits parts to cars, is very good stuff. It's filling the holes in the casting quite nicely. If I find any larger holes, I can always fill these with cellulose putty. So the bed plate's looking good so far. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful.